Order of the Wicked, Chapter 9 It was Knox who found her, of course. It didn't take him long. She wondered sometimes if he had some extra sixth sense that told him everything she was going to do before she did it. That would explain why he'd known it was her on top of Mount Gilkin. Why could, she could never beat him in a fight? Well, in the fact that she'd just learned how to fight a couple of months ago. She'd stopped crying long before he heard his foot fall, footfalls on the rocks behind her. Without realizing it, she'd run all the way to the place she'd overheard his fight with Melindra. Only now, it was daylight, just as it had been when Mombi had showed her the mountaintop for the first time. From here, she could see all the way down into the valley, and the dim purple mountains against the horizon as far as she could see, jagged as a torn piece of paper against the blue sky. Nox sank down on his haunches next to her, and after a minute, when it was obvious she wasn't going to move, he stretched out his legs and sat down on the rough stone. She had to fight the impulse to move away from him. He could pretend to be her friend now, but after last night, she knew different. She knew his concern was nothing more than a face he put on when it suited him. I know what you are thinking, he said finally, after a long, painful silence. You don't know anything about me, she said sharply. You never asked because you don't care. You don't even know where I'm from or what happened to my family or... Two brothers, Knox said, not looking at her. Both older. Good with the harvest. Your parents had high hopes for them. They doted on you. Took you with them wherever they went, but teased you constantly. Your parents were older and didn't think they could have any more children when your mother got pregnant with you until Dorothy's troops found your village. They were ordinary farmers, poor but happy. Her forces tried to take as many of the strong young workers as they could, but your brothers fought harder than most. It was someone in your own village who betrayed them. The head councilman. He cried for help, and when your brothers ran to his aid, he locked them inside his house and called to Dorothy's troops. He promised them your brothers in exchange for sparing the village, but they killed him anyway. Dorothy's soldiers beheaded both of your brothers in front of your parents, and then killed your parents too. You saw the whole thing. You were hiding under your parents' bed in your family's one-room cottage. By the time you came out, everyone in your village was dead or abducted, and your village was burning. You walked all the way here. By the time you found the order, you were nearly dead. But you didn't care. Avenge me your family or die with them. Those were the only options. Lonardale stared at him. How did you know all that? She finally asked. Is nothing safe from you people? My whole history, Annabelle's life, none of it matters when it comes to the cause. Gert can read minds. Knox said calmly. She thinks it's best if I know what I am getting into when I train someone, and it comes in handy to ensure there are no traitors in our midst. It's nothing personal. Nothing personal, Lonadale spat. Just my entire life. A story I never told you myself? Knowing other people's secrets doesn't seem to bother you, Knox snapped. Toughen up, Lonadale. There are times that none of us ever imagined we'd see. Dorothy is bad enough, but the idea that our own people would turn on each other. Dorothy made them, Lonadale shrieked. He was a good man, head councilman Alder. He was fair and just and... And... He was trying to save his own skin, Knox said. That's the worst part, isn't it? He doesn't care about the village. Half the people in your village were already dead. He only cared about himself, and he was willing to sacrifice your brothers for his own safety. Not that it worked. Knox snorted. Say what you like about Dorothy's army, but apparently they don't like bri take bribes. Lonadel looked at him in horror. Hard to hear, Lonadel? That's nothing, believe me. You have to be able to face the truth if you're going to fight with us. You have to accept that this is a war that affects all of us. That everyone can turn on us. The Tin Woodman, the Lion, the Scarecrow. You think they're from the other place? You know they're Ozian, same as the rest of us. The Scarecrow used to be king, sure. He wasn't great at the job, but he wasn't turning Winkies into killing machines either. Dorothy's not a savior anymore, she's a monster. Any one of us can be corrupted, any one of us can be a traitor. You can't trust anyone. Turning Winkies into killing machines? Lonadel asked Dully. That's what we sent Annabelle to find out. That's who's responsible for what happened in our vill your village. We'd heard rumors that the Scarecrow and the Tin were working together to create an army for Dorothy somehow. We needed to know the truth. He sighed. Turns out the truth is even more horrible than the stories. And that's why we have to move now. That's what I came up here to tell you. 
The healing pool helped, but Annabelle is still traumatized from what she's been through out there. I don't want to send her out again until I'm certain she's recovered. Her face was blank. But it's time. Time for Melindra to go to the Emerald Palace. And time for you to go to Ev. Lanadel stared at him, her mind reeling. That was what he'd been talking about with Gert? Ev? The fabled ca- country across the deadly desert, supposedly a twisted mirror image of Oz, ruled by a crazy century-old king? The gnome king must have been the he they'd mentioned. She was supposed to be a spy in his ancient corrupt court. Except that Ev doesn't exist. It was a story parents scared their kids with when they were misbehaving. Not a real place. Ev is just a myth, she said. And even Melinda can't... I know what those creatures can do. You send Melinda out there, she'll die. She remembered what she'd overheard in the mountaintop. Even Melinda, with all her confidence and her strength, knew that a trip to the Emerald City was almost as certain to, to be a one-way ticket. I'm not sending her to fight, he said. I'm sending her to be a spy, just like I'm sending you. Ev is real, Lana Del, as real as Oz. She shook her head in disbelief, but he was serious. And whatever is giving Dorothy her power just might come from there. Mommy and Gert have suspected for a long time that there's some force in Ev that is partly responsible for bringing Dorothy back. You're the one who's going to find out. Has anyone from Oz ever been to Ev? Lorraine, Knox said. Maybe. I don't have experience. I can barely use magic. Shouldn't you send Holly or Larkin? Holly and Larkin are good fighters, but they're not... Subtle. Neither is Melindra. His face was so flat it sounded refrigerated. I need someone who can play the innocent. Someone who is still innocent. Someone like you. We don't know what you'll find out there. So you're sending me into a total unknown, and you're sending Melindra to her death? Lonardale said, her voice hot with fury. If she'd been angry at Knox last night, there was nothing compared to what she felt now. Knox had been trying to protect Melindra when he'd argued with Gert. He wanted to keep her out of unnecessary danger. But now he wasn't thinking twice about sending her to the Emerald City. He wanted Melindra as far away from him as possible, and she knows exactly why. This doesn't have anything to do with skill, does it? You don't want either of us around. You don't want anyone to distract you from your precious order. She knew what he told Melinda that night, that he hated watching his trainees die, but it was as if Knox had been a different person, and the Knox in front of her now has all walls. There was no chance of getting through to the person who told Melinda how much he wanted to protect her. That has nothing to do with this, Knox said sharply. This was Mombi and Gert's decision. Oh, I'm sure it was, Lonadel said, her voice icy. It's just happened to be an incredibly convenient decision for you. But is it me, just me, or is sending your best fighter on death mission a really bad idea, Knox? She won't be in danger, Knox said. Much danger, he amended. She's going to infiltrate the Emerald Palace, get some information for us, and come back. You know she can't do that, Lonadel yelled. She's told me a million times. Glamorous tossed her out of etiquette lessons because she can't pretend to be a courtier. She doesn't have to be a courtier, Knox snapped. She'll be a servant, and the details of her mission are none of your business. Anyway, this isn't your decision, Lonadel. I'm only telling you because... Because... Because you want me to know what happens when you actually have feelings for someone, Lonadel said coldly. You send them out to the Emerald City to die. I won't let you do this. I don't have... He cut himself off. It doesn't matter. She's already agreed. When could she possibly have time to do that? Knox jerked his head toward something behind her. You can ask her for yourself. Melinda had come up behind them without Lana Del hearing her. Is it true? Lana Del asked her. Are you going into the Emerald City? Melinda's expression was filled with raw pain as she looked at Knox. Somebody has to do it, she said. We needed information about Dorothy's soldiers, if we're going to fight them, how the woodman's creating them, if they have the weak- if they have weaknesses, that kind of thing. It's a suicide mission, Lonadel said desperately. We can't let them send you into the I wanted to go, Melinda said, not taking her eyes off Knox. I volunteered. 
Lana Dell opened her mouth to protest and then stop. She knew why Melinda had volunteered, and had nothing to do with the order. Knox had broken her heart. But she couldn't stop Melinda from going without admitting that she had overheard their fight on the mountain, and she knew that Melinda, just like Knox, would never forgive her if she knew Lana Dell had been her, seen her at her weakest. Melinda and Knox were so much alike, except that Melinda had learned how to let go of her tough exterior when something really mattered to her, and Knox was trapped by it. Melinda didn't care if she died in Dorothy's palace. She didn't care if she never came back at all. She was just going to go on the most dangerous place in Oz, and there was nothing Lana Dell could do to stop her. It was like losing her family all over again. Tears welled up in her eyes, and she dashed them away angrily with the heel of her hand. Lana Dell wanted to beg her again to stay, to tell her that it was not worth it, but she knew deep down that her words could not stall Melinda from leaving. Only Knox's could. When do I go to Ev? she asked. She was proud of herself for keeping the tremor out of her voice. Melinda looked at Knox, startled out of her Ice Queen act. You're sending her to Ev? In a few days, it's already been decided, Knox said. Pure rage flickered in Melinda's eyes before she tamped it down. I'll be fine, Lana Del said although she had no idea of what if that was true. The last thing she wanted was to make Melinda worry about her. She grabbed Melinda in a sudden tight embrace, her nostrils filling with the sea salt smell of Melinda's hair. Words bubbled up again, ones that she still could not say, ones that Melinda would never return. She took a deep breath and chose other words. Stay alive, she whispered into her ear. Please, for me. Melinda hugged her back fiercely. You too she said quietly, for all of us. Mombi and Gerd are working on a spell to get you across the deadly desert, Knox said. Reluctantly, Lana Dell let Melinda go. She didn't, couldn't say what she wanted to, that the order wasn't worth dying for, that Knox wasn't worth dying for, but she knew exactly how it felt to be willing to die because you had nothing left to live for, and she knew there was nothing she could say to Melinda that would make her change her mind. Anyway, the risk of, risk of death is worth if it means I can get away from Holly and Larkin for a while, Melinda said. Her voice was light, but her eyes were distant. There was a cloud of sadness around her so thick, Lana Del could almost touch it. I'm going to check in on Annabelle, she added. Lana Del nodded. Knox watched her go, his expression unfathomable, and then continued as if they hadn't been interrupted. They're figuring out another spell to get you back once you've gathered information. Mommy will have more instructions for you once the spell's complete. Your mission may be dangerous, he added unnecessarily. I know what I knew what I signed up for when I got here, she said. In just a few short months, the order had transformed her into a fighter, but she owed them nothing. They never had any intention of helping her avenge her family. They just wanted another pawn, like Knox himself, even though he couldn't see it, and she wasn't going to help them anymore. Not unless they really had a way to stop Dorothy. Not unless they were really going to fight, and not just train all day on their mountain hideaway like children playing at being an army. Without Melinda, there was nothing to keep her there, and she wasn't going to die for an order that was willing to sacrifice someone like Melinda just because Knox didn't want her around. It's not what you're thinking, Knox said, looking at her. Lonadel, I swear, she's better than I am, he, she, he said quietly his eyes not leaving her face. I'm doing what I can. You have to believe me. What you saw last night, it's not everything. She ignored him. When do I leave? She asked coldly. As soon as the spell is complete. He kept trying to catch her eye, but she refused to look at him. He could say whatever he wanted to, but she knew the truth. Knox didn't care about Melindra. Not, at least not enough. He certainly didn't care about Lana Dell. The only things he cared about were himself and the Order, and they were one and the same. She turned to go. Lana Dell, Knox said. His voice was pleading, but she refused to look at him. I'll go find Mombi and Gert, she said. She turned away from Knox and walked back into the caverns. Knox might have a plan for her, but that didn't mean she would, had to follow it. She was on her own now. Forget the Order. She was going to find a way to avenge her family herself, on her own terms. They'd given her the skill she needed, and now she didn't need them anymore. It didn't matter. Gert and Mombi were giving her a ticket out of the mountain, away from the Order, 
Let them think they're ordering her around. Let them send her away. She didn't care anymore what the order did. She could play their game even better than they could. She could be a dozen different people if they wanted her to. A dozen fake selves, so that no one could ever guess which one was the real her. The order might se could send her to Ev, but no matter what happened, no matter what they wanted, wanted from her, she was never coming back. This time, she was really, truly alone, and she was going to make everyone who'd hurt her pay.